Hey everyone, this is Ralph. Welcome back to my channel as I share the five personal finance lessons that have changed my life. And these lessons have been birthed out of mistakes. Some of them honest mistakes, others stupid ones. But regardless, I've learned some lessons that I believe are going to bless your life. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. And without any further ado, let's dive right in. Now, the first lesson I want to share with you is that money will not exalt you. It will expose you. I've always been competitive and never was that more true than my sales career. And I looked at people who had the nice cars, the suits, the fancy dinners, the trips, the golf, all that kind of stuff. And there's nothing wrong with wanting or having nice things, but I attached myself worth to those things. I basically felt like the fact that I didn't have them at a certain time in my life meant that I was less of a person. And because they had it, that means they were, you know, better people. And that's not the case at all. They were in the game longer than me or, you know, maybe had better sales careers than I did. And because they put in the work, because they put in the time and built their businesses long term, those businesses started to pay them back and they were able to afford the rewards that they had. So, you know, they started out broke just like I did. But I just saw that I have to have this. I have to go where they go and eat where they eat and drive what they drive. And there was a point in my life where I finally got the BMW. I had the custom suits. I had the custom dress shirts with the Windsor spread collar and the French cuffs and the uh, four in hand knot with the dimple and all that kind of stuff that I think that I thought was going to make me feel better about myself. And it didn't. It did not make me feel better. It exposed that there was a lot of work that I needed to do on myself to you know, really become the person that I believe God has called me to become. It wasn't the stuff. Once I got it, once I got the prize, what I thought would make me feel better about myself, not only did I not feel better about myself, but nobody cared. Nobody cared that I was driving down the road in a BMW. I remember when I first got it, I felt like the man, like I was on top of the world until that first payment came out. And when I saw how much money came out of my checking account, that knocked me right back down to earth and started to help me realize and prioritize the things that are really important in life. So if you think that money is going to make you feel better about yourself and listen, money solves problems. It's fun. You can enjoy it. There's a lot of good that you can do to bless others, but there's a difference between that and measuring your worth by your checking account or your investment account. That is a mistake that has caused lots of people to really be painfully surprised and disappointed that everything that they work for didn't give them the satisfaction that they thought it would give them. There's even people that have taken their lives, unfortunately, because they've attached their perceived status, their perceived value to money. And then there's people who hardly have any money who are happy, well-adjusted, uh, prosperous in all of the right areas and are much better people pound for pound than those that think that money is going to solve their problems. So understand that money will not exalt you. It will expose you if you're not careful. The next personal finance lesson I learned is to filter all of my financial decisions through my goals. I was just out spending money and that's very dangerous. I didn't think about what I'm trying to achieve long term. I was focused on the here and now. I was entitled. I thought because I work 60, 70 hours a week that I deserve this. I deserve that. And that was totally wrong. I didn't take time to, first of all, set the right goals and then to say, OK, before I spend this money, how is it going to impact my goals? Short, medium and long term. And if you go through life like that, listen, you're going to have major problems. And that's something that I discovered for myself that if you're going to get up every day, get dressed and go out, go to work and go through the battle, the give and take of daily life, you better have some goals and be working towards something. Otherwise, you're not living. You're just existing. You're essentially functioning like a robot because you're not working to build anything. You're not will, uh, you know, working for any specific outcome. You're just literally going through the motions. You're waking up and going through all the motions that you normally go through until you go back to sleep that night. And life is too short and too precious and too much of a gift for that. So before you make financial decisions, examine your goals and ask yourself every time how this is going to impact you long term. You know, is this going to short circuit my goals or is this going to help move me in the direction of what I'm trying to achieve? Because 
nothing is neutral. You're either moving forward or you're moving backward. You're never standing still. So filter your decisions through your goals. You'll be better off. Here's a very important lesson that I learned. Don't let anyone pressure you ever. We live in a very competitive economy where everyone's trying to sell you something. And not only are people in the marketplace trying to sell you something, there may be people in your life that are trying to pressure you to do things that they want you to do. Don't let them. If you feel a sense of urgency, let that be your sense of urgency, not because someone is you know, pitchforking you to get you to do something, to spend money or to invest in something they want you to invest in or to give. And there's even some charities that I've come across that, you know, are quite aggressive in, in trying to get you to, you know, donate money to their cause and all those kinds of things. If it's something that you want to do, go for it. But if not, you stand your ground. And going back to my last point, your goals, you examine whatever's going on relative to your goals and you make the decision based on that. And don't let anyone emotionally manipulate you or pressure you into doing things that they want because you're helping them achieve their goals. That's their motives that they're trying to impart on you and make you feel guilty when you don't do what they want you to do or, you know, playing games. Well, if you don't do this or do that, then I'm going to, you know, take my ball and go home. Or, you know, if you're not in with this person at work or if you're not cool with Jim or cool with Sally or do what they have to do, you know, whatever it is they want you to do, then, you know, you're not going to be in. You're going to have problems around here, whatever. You make sure that when it comes to your money and really your life, in broader terms, that you don't let anyone pressure you and you don't succumb to anyone's pressure. That is a recipe for disaster and it's going to wreak havoc in your life. So be who you've been called to be. Do things for your reasons. Others don't have to agree whether it's right or wrong, but you have to live with the consequences or the rewards that come from it. And that's okay. And it's also very empowering. So forget the pressure. Do things for your reasons and your reasons alone. Now, before I continue, your wheels might already be spinning and there may be a lesson or two that you've learned over time. So whatever that is, please leave a comment. I'm sure that whatever your experience is will be a blessing not only to me, but to many other people. So I'd love to hear your feedback. Now, the next lesson that I learned, which was probably the most difficult, is that you don't have to spend money to have a good time. I used to equate fun with going out and spending 50, 75, 100 dollars, whether it was clubs or parties or buying certain things, retail therapy. And that's just not the case. I mean, you can have fun when you spend money, but it doesn't mean that you have to spend money to have fun. And the older I get, the more that I realize that it's the people that you're with that determine whether or not you have a good time. When you have the right company, let me tell you, and I'm sure you can attest to this as well, you can have a great time with the, the people that mean the most to you, that value you for who you are and you the same for them. It doesn't require you spending a ton of money and going broke and then living with the regret of how much that you spent. And can you think of a time where you spent a lot of money and because of the company you were with, it was a miserable time. I know that I can. In fact, several of them more than I'd probably want to admit. So that should be all the evidence in the world that you don't have to spend a ton of money to enjoy yourself. You can live below your means and still have a very rewarding and meaningful and fulfilled life. And many of the wealthiest people that I've ever you know, met or even worked with professionally, they're pretty tight with money, not because they're personally stingy, but because the things that fulfill them don't cost a lot of money. I worked with a couple many years ago. This is at least 10 years ago. They were passionate about birding. That's what they love to do. They had these high end binoculars. They had books on top of books about different kinds of birds and when you're most likely to see them and when their feathers are uh, of the brightest colors and um, you know, certain birds and, you know, in the fall when the leaves are changing and how they kind of pop out against the, like they were into this thing and they would go to state parks and, you know, different places, some of them local, some of them a couple of hours drive. And they would go on and on about the time that they had with binoculars watching birds and marveling at the majesty of them as they saw it. Not expensive, but they absolutely loved it. 
Some people like to hike, some like to paint, some like to do, you know, many other things. So find something that you really enjoy that doesn't cost a lot of money and lean in on that and also examine the company you keep because that's really the key differentiator between a great time and a terrible time. So, you know, this is something that really was just a part of me maturing a little bit and understanding that, listen, you don't have to, you know, go broke every weekend in order to have a good time. Just stop, think, don't worry about what other people think of you because really they're not paying you any attention, not as much as you think that they are. And you can enjoy life and still hit your financial goals, still be fiscally responsible without going broke. Now, this next lesson is a game changer. Don't ever allow possessions to possess you. And I started to go down that path a little bit where I was focused more on what I had than the person I was becoming. And that's not a place that you want to be. And as I started to get involved with that more and more, I realized that was a place that I didn't want to be. At the end of the day, you can't take any of it with you. It's just stuff. It doesn't make you. You make it. And material things such as cars and houses and jewelry and gadgets and whatever else, they are inanimate objects. They are man-made. They don't feed your soul. They don't feed your spirit. They don't love you. They're not going to be there for you when you need them. It's just stuff in a box. So don't attach yourself to what you have. Don't, you know, lift your shirt up so everyone can see the belt buckle because you want people to know that it's Hermes. You know, those are all things that really people and this might step on some toes, but I'm going to say it anyway. These are really self-esteem plays, you know, when it's a belt, <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's a watch, it's a shirt. Again, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with name brands and nice cars and labels and all of that stuff if you like it. But if you're purchasing those things just for the psychological income or just so you can strut around like a peacock, then all you're doing is revealing that there are deficiencies within yourself that you may want to look at and you may want to work to correct. Going back to my first point, that money is not going to exalt you. It's going to expose you. Well, it's the same with things and possession. They are not going to exalt you. They will expose you. So have the nice things, take the nice trips, do all of that. There's nothing wrong with uh, sh you know, sharing the blessings that you have on social media and, you know, letting people know what God has done in your life and how you've been blessed. But just make sure you understand the difference between, you know, sharing what you have and just going through life on a day to day basis and strutting around like you're Mr. or Ms. Big Stuff, because you're not sorry to tell you. It's just what it is. And I love you too much to not tell you the truth. Listen, thanks very much for tuning in. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. And I hope these lessons have really blessed your life because they are powerful and they don't just apply to money, but they apply to you being the best person that you could possibly be. So once again, this is Ralph. Thanks very much for tuning in and I'll see you soon.